Before we can begin with this presentation, we believe that it is important to acknowledge that the land that Trent University sits on is the treaty and traditional territory of the Michisag Anishinaabe. Through both treaty and land claims processes, Curve Lake First Nation, Alderville First Nation, Hiawatha First Nation, and the Mississaugas of Scugog First Nation have all been established in the area known as Peterborough. As treaty people, it is our obligation to uphold a standard of empathy and respect towards the indigenous peoples of so-called Canada. We must recognize that learning the truths behind the relations of European settlers and the indigenous peoples of Turtle Island is only the first step of the continuous journey of reconciliation. I'm sure that as we wake up in the morning, we don't usually think about how much we depend on the land to bring the comforts that we enjoy each day. Every meal that we eat and every piece of clothing that we put on our bodies was made with resources provided for us by the earth. As we stepped out on this walk, however, we were forced to be mindful of all these taken for granted things. We looked at the shedding branches of the trees lining the path and thought of the impending winter, realizing that this year's blooms had nearly finished their time with us. This connected us to the north of the Anishinaabe medicine wheel, which represents winter, the night, the mind, and the elder stage of life. As we walked through the wooded area, it was incredible seeing just how much sunlight was able to penetrate through the leaf cover. It was as if somebody was opening the blinds to let the sun into the room to start their day. The light revealed the many different forms of life which inhabited the green space we were exploring. The diversity of life was very interesting to see, with multiple types of mushrooms making their homes in the decay of other plants, and plants being fed on by insects like bees and wasps. This perfectly embodied the concept that was spoken about in lecture, that all things in nature have interrelationships with each other, and that creation is ongoing and deserving of our respect as humans. Although we did not see much animal life, what we did see still brought us joy and imbued us with the spirit of the land. These thoughts brought us to the eastern section of the medicine circle, responsible for spring, the morning, the spirit, and new life. In the forest, there was obvious evidence of human activity, from rusted spools of wire left over from building a fence to various bottles and coffee cups which littered the ground. This brought us to think about the environment and all that indigenous peoples do as stewards and keepers of this land. We thought about the land guardians who dedicate themselves to the upkeep of their home territories using both scientific methods and indigenous teachings. As humans, it's counterproductive to show such little regard for our land. As represented in the Western quadrant of the medicine wheel, we have an undeniable physical relationship and responsibility to it. This relationship continues to deteriorate as global warming tears lands apart with more frequent and more intense weather phenomena. It is important as we enter adulthood to make the change that we want to see for the earth in order to ensure that future generations are able to enjoy the same beauty as we are able to. Really we had thought of the southern section of the medicine wheel responsible for summer, emotions, and youth. While traveling down the path we could see what was left over from the summer months as there were still some trees which had berries hanging from their branches and bright flowers which were just in the beginning stages of wilting away. The weather was warm, with cold, refreshing winds which allowed us to not feel unbearably hot as we walked. We thought about all the changes happening in our lives because of the new school year and how they made us feel. This walk was a time of reflection and personal growth. Being among nature and away from technology allowed for us to look inwards and think about how we would use the wisdom that we have received from taking this course. Taking the resources that we have learned from others so that we may all be better informed about indigenous knowledge and teachings. We also wanted to keep the seven grandfather and grandmother teachings as active as possible in our minds. These teachings, bravery, humility, honesty, love, respect, wisdom, and truth, would help guide us into the mindset of indigenous knowledge and allow us to explore the land while viewing it from a perspective that we hadn't considered before this point. Something that struck out to us relating to the seven grandfather and grandmother teachings was humility, as even though popular culture likes to put humanity at the top of every natural hierarchy, the observable truth is that we are just like any other living thing in the universe. We have struggles and successes, habits and traditions, and of course, we all live on the land. <laughs>